This is a Lego. It's red, it's rectangular, and it's about an inch long. But this is not the only type of Lego. There are thousands, and they come in different shapes, different sizes, and different colors. And you can use them basically to build anything you could want. You could build a car, you could build a house. But I'm guessing everyone in here already knows that and has played with Legos before, to some extent. But what I'm guessing you don't know is that Legos are more than a toy. They aren't just for little kids to use. Legos actually have practical, and that's why I'm here to inform you that Legos have practical use in today's society and that they can have an impact on our world. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, Legos are a great tool for teaching. And so one example of this is Mrs. Olin, who is the middle school science teacher upstairs. And what she does, she uses um, Legos to teach about photosynthesis. And basically what she has, she has these Legos, which represent carbon dioxide, and then this, which represents water. And when you combine them and form them into a glucose molecule, which is this, you basically get the example, this teaches the kids about photosynthesis. And you combine them and you end up with a tower of oxygens left over. And that is the pl oxygen plants give off for us to breathe, which is what keeps us alive. And then I also have been to a seminar uh, in sixth grade. And basically it taught how gear ratios work. And we basically got to build cars and use what we learned to try and build a car and see what we could do with that. And this taught me a lot about how the gear ratios work with different sizes. And when you combine them, they make different things, and they can make, give you more torque or power, or they can give you more speed. And I'm still applying this today in our robotics team, and Andrew can attest that, that we, we understand the gear ratios, and we do really well with that, even if we don't quite know all the rest of the stuff yet. But, uh, so if you could go to the next slide. Legos are also used for attractions in art, and so a man named James May uh, lives in England, and he decided to undertake a task back in 2009 to build an entire two-story house out of Legos. And so this is the finished product. It's all, all sorts of colors. He built, it took him a, uh, about a year to build. He, uh, a thousand volunteers helped him. And so this is about 3.3 million Legos. He's got things like dogs. He's got a full kitchen stocked with all sorts of food supplies. He built a bed. He built a bathroom. He's got everything in there. And that lasted for a few weeks for people to tour it and see it before it had to be taken down because it wasn't, he didn't have like insurance for a official building. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. And the other thing, uh, Lego, the, com the actual Lego company, uses uh, sculptures or, or massive statues of things in their company and their stores all around the world. And so this one on the far left is a dragon that they, in the Rockefeller Center in New York. And it goes all around, goes all around the store. It weaves in, or in, a, in and out. You've got Buzz and Woody from Toy Story, and this is in Orlando and, uh, <coughs> at Disney, downtown Disney. And so you've got Buzz and Woody, and then you've got Maleficent and Prince Philip. And these are massive Lego structures used to kind of attract customers and be just appealing to the eye. Next. Uh, Legos also have practical use in our world. And so there's a company I found called Dispatchwork. And they go around all around the world. They have about, they've been into 36 countries. And what they do, they take Legos and they fix things. So basically, here you have a wall in New York City that has a tile missing from the side of it. So someone took Legos and built a tile, it fits right in there. There's Legos that wrap around the corner of it to hold it in place, and so it sits there as this replacement tile. Here in Ohio, they've got, in front of an art museum, they've fixed the stair, and they've used different pieces and they fit it in there so that it'll actually function as a stair and not trip people. And then here in Israel, they've used this to fix and support a wall, and it, it kind of fixes out the corner where it's been broken down and where mortar's been chipped out and is no longer there. And so they use this, and they go all around the world, adding color to kind of broken down things, and also making them kind of look more like they did when they were originally made. Next slide, please. One other thing, uh, Legos are being used, Cambridge University students are using Legos to de develop artificial bone. And basically what they're doing, they're taking screws, they're tying a string to it, and they're dipping it into a protein substance and then into water. And they have to do this for days at a time to create a sample that they can then actually study. And so one of the, the scientists came up with this idea that he could get a Lego Mindstorms uh, set, which is basically Lego robotics. And he, this, this cost a few hundred dollars. And he could build the crane they needed to then just lower the screw into the beakers, pick them up, and move them. And it, it could do it for days at a time, and no one would have to keep an eye or check on it. And this saves them lots of money. Uh, they have this couple hundred dollars set instead of having to buy a thousand dollar robot to do the same thing. And then when they're done, they can simply take this crane apart and they can build it for whatever their next experiment is and they can go on with that. And so these are just a few of the examples that, of how Legos are used today in our society. And the people are continuing with these robotics things, coming up with more and more ways to use them and more and more ways to impact our world. 
And so I hope this has showed you and informed you on how Legos are more than just a toy in today's society and practically are used. Thank you.